Okay, hello. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to do end game calculation. Uh, I like to use this game to go over how to do end game calculation. This was the game Lev Aronian versus Vasily Smyslov, Moscow, 1951. This is an excerpt taken from that game. It's towards the end of the game, obviously. Um, all the pieces have been exchanged, and we've reached this king upon endgame. So the way that we calculate an endgame like this is really quite simple. We draw green arrows on the board, um, and then our opponent draws green arrows on the board, and whichever side has more green arrows clearly has a much longer plan and will therefore win the game with decisive force because their green arrows are bigger than black's green arrows. And white clearly has more of them, so obviously white's winning. No, that's not how we calculate these endgames. The way we calculate these endgames is we count, and that's why I have the green arrows up on the board to show you how to count this out. What we're going to do is we're going to count out how long it takes for white to do his queenside plan versus how long it takes for white to do his kingside plan. So that's what we need to know, is how long does it take to do each plan in the position. So we're going to start... Let's say white decides he just wants to go over to the queen side and gobble up these pawns and make a queen. How long is that going to take? More importantly, how long is it going to take to just gobble up this pawn on b4? So that's going to take white one, two, three, four moves to gobble up the pawn on b4. How long will it take black to try to save that pawn? If he runs over there and tries to save it, how long is that going to take black? It's going to take black one, two, three, four. But unfortunately, black moves second. That means that by the time the black king gets to d6, white will have already gobbled up this pawn. Now, of course, you're thinking, well, black can defend this pawn with a5. Certainly he can. But if he does that, that's not a move that was originally part of black's plan of coming over here to defend. So by the time black plays a5, his king will only be on e7. So after a5, white would be able to play king c5, king d7, king b6, and then some king move, maybe king d6, we would play king takes a5, the pawn would have to defend this pawn, pawn to c5, we would play king b5, and then we would actually win the c-pawn as well. So we'd not only win the a-pawn, we would also win the c-pawn, and that would just be completely disastrous in every way. So it looks like on the surface, it looks like white should win this game. It looks like white should just come over here to the queen side, gobble up all the pawns, push his queen side pawn, and that should be the end of it. And it looks like that's the only plan that makes any sense, because if we come over here to the king's side, it's going to take us one, two, three moves to get to the king's side, but guess what? Black is only one move away from stopping us from doing anything at all on the king's side. So, looks like the queen's side plan wins, right? Not quite, because there are two sides to the board. There's the king's side and the queen's side. This side over here that the king starts on, we call that the king's side. This side over here where the queen starts, we call that the queen's side. I know, clever names. Chess players are smart. We come up with really cool names for things. So, if going to the queen side isn't going to work for black, then black's going to have to go to the king side. But first, let's check. Let's see. Is, you know, for those of you that just couldn't follow the calculation in your head, let's go ahead and let's see. Can I just go to the queen side with black and try to defend? So, my king is going to run over here to the queen side, and it's going to gobble up all these pawns, and we're going to make a queen. That's our plan. And black is like, no, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to come over there and defend my pawns. I have plenty of time. I'm not good at counting either. So king d3, and then we have king e7, king c4, king d6, and king d6. And then, oh no, Mr. Wizard, help. I think there's a problem because, yeah, we just took that pawn. Oh, boy, that's a big problem. Okay, so that doesn't work. So king d6 doesn't work. So can we try something else? Well, as I pointed out before, instead of king d6, we could have tried a5. Is a5 a huge improvement, though? We're going to play a5, king c5, king d7, king b6. And for those of you that couldn't follow that calculation earlier, now you have a visual representation. But again, you don't need to calculate every single move. All you have to do is you have to count out the plan versus the other guy's plan. King d6, king a5, c5, king b5, and boom, we're going to be winning that pawn on c5 because black is in zugzwang. This is one of those non-mutual zugzwangs. Just any move black makes, he's going to lose here. He's totally frozen. So g4, f5, c4, they all lose material. Any king move is going to lose material. So this game is basically over. All of black's pawns are just going to fall like ripe apples. 
they're just going to fall off the tree and that's going to be the end of it so if we go all the way back it looks hopeless right white's going to come over here gobble up the pawns and that's the end of the game but no that's not the end of the game because there's two sides to the board there's two sides to a coin there's two sides to a dollar bill um there's two sides to a yo-yo although that's not totally relevant because the yo-yo just kind of operates you know up and down but still there's two sides you know there's two sides to a lot of things so my king's going to go over here to the queen side we have another option we have this king side we can come over here how long is that going to take so we have to count on the king side now the counting on the king side is going to go a little different you'll see why so first off we're not going to be stopping white from doing any of his stuff over here on the queen side. So we need to know how long that plan's going to take. Just, just to, to get a queen. Take all the pawns, get a queen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 moves. Okay, keep that number in your head. Because that's the number to beat. we got to beat 12. If we can't beat 12, black is dead in this position. So we got to figure this out. Okay, so king g6, that's 1. f5, that's 2 takes king f5 still two i know you're thinking robert you counted wrong that's not right you're not supposed to count like that that's not how you count didn't did you fail grade school math no i did not the second time for sure i didn't but no i did not fail grade school math the reason we count that way is because this move captures and our move captures our move is part of the plan this move is not part of the plan so every time white makes a move that's outside of the plan, we don't count that move. Because remember, we're not just counting for the sake of counting. We're counting our plan versus our opponent's plan. Okay, and once you realize that, this isn't very hard to count. So it's one, two, still two, because that move wasn't part of the plan. Three, still three, because that move wasn't part of the plan. Four, five, Still five, because that move wasn't part of the plan. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine moves to make a queen for black. Twelve moves to make a queen for white, if white does his plan. Now there is this option right in the middle. This e pawn might be able to run. I don't think that's going to do it either, though. Let's take a look. What, what if we did this? What if my king went to the queen side and they did their king side plan? So... We, I gotta know now. Let's let's see if this this really works out the way we just countered it in our head. Because it looks like Black's queening first if if we do this. So King e2, King g6. We're just going for the king side. We've given up on the queen. You you sorry guys, you're, you're not gonna make it. F5 takes takes. King c4, g4 takes takes. King takes b4. Oh no, we lost our pawn e4 king c5 e3 takes king g3 and i pointed out this pawn could run what if it runs though how long is that going to take versus how long is our plan going to take well we can count right here one two three four five one two three four aha black still gets there first so king takes c6 king g2 king b7 h3 c4 h2 c5 h1 equals queen wow we didn't just get there we got there really fast we got there way before, way before white got there. Whoa. Like, I guess black would be winning in that position. Huh. So what are we going to do? Okay, so we come back to our initial, our starting position where we had all these arrows. We had all these big plants. We had all these arrows. And it looks like we've looked at everything. What are we going to do? But we haven't looked at everything yet. Because there's two sides to this coin. There's two sides to these glasses. Yeah, I can turn them this way. This works too. It's two sides to everything. Black went to the king side because white's plan on the queen side was really strong. What if white played on the king side, but not to attack over there? Because we already know that doesn't work, because it takes three moves to get over there, and it only takes one move for black to stop us. What if we just made a move to try to stop black's king side plan? And that's exactly what white did. White played g4. If he can freeze the king side, he can win by playing king e2, king d3, king c4, king b4, etc. So now, Vasily Smikslov, former world champion, starts breathing really heavy right here. He starts trying to figure it out. What am I going to do? Actually, I don't even think he was the world champion yet. So, 
world champion to be. What am I going to do? So he's got to figure this out. What is he going to do? And thankfully he remembered from grade school that when a pawn moves up two and it takes that two-step option, you can pretend like it moved one on the very next move and only the very next move and you can take it. Woo! That was close. Kingside almost got blocked up. White's going to take back. So now it looks like we have another problem, though. White is going to have an outside pass pawn with h4, and that's not a huge threat, though. And, and Black realizes that, because that outside pass pawn is easily handled by this king. What's the big threat? The big threat is White's threatening to block this position up again. He's threatening to play g4. And again, if he locks up that king side, that's bad news for the queen side. So what does black do? Smisloth plays another good move. Boom. I'm not going to let you do it. I'm not going to let you lock up my king side. He plays g4. And this move was an all-star move. This move gets like two exclaims in my book. This move saved the game. Now obviously if pawn takes g4, he's just going to walk his king up. King g6, king g5, and then white will eventually find himself in some sort of zugzwang where he has to give up at least the g4 pawn. So white gets his protected outside passed pawn, and again it looks like it's over. He's got a protected outside passed pawn. What is keeping me from bringing my king over to this queen side, gobbling up all these pawns and winning the game. I have an outside protected pass pawn that you're going to be distracted by, that you're going to have to stop. So what is keeping me from coming over here and gobbling up the pawns? So, Smith plays c5. King e2. King h7. Smith playing some weird moves here. King d3, king h6. c3, a5. C takes b4, A takes b4, and boy, it just looks like white can just play king c4, king c5, king b4, and gobble up the pawns. But instead, Smyslov offered a draw with his last move, and white agreed. I don't know if Smyslov offered it or the other guy offered it, but they agreed to a draw here. The players agreed to a draw here. They're grandmasters. Why would they do this? Hmm. Clearly, white can just play king c4 and gobble up these pawns. Why would they agree to a draw? Because black had one resource remaining. And again, that resource was on the king side. If white goes for the queen side, black has a resource on the king side. So if the move king c4 question mark had been played, black could have played the amazing f5 breaking through on the king side, creating a passed pawn over here on the king side. And this is just incredible. After pawn takes f5, we have e4. And then this king is stuck. The king can't take this pawn because this pawn will run. The king can't step right, can't step back, can't step over here because all those squares are covered. If the pawn moves, the king is going to come and gobble him up. Eventually, this king will have to move, and when it does, it is going to have to move behind the passed pawn, and then the passed pawn is going to run, and it's going to make a queen. In this position, white would actually lose. White is in zigzag here. And that is why, back here, the players agreed to a draw, because the best they had was for each of them to simply shuffle their kings back and forth, and that would have been a draw. And that is how you do endgame calculations. That is how you calculate plans in endgames, and you measure your plan against your opponent's plan, and you come up with the number of moves that each of those plans is going to take, and that allows you to find the most accurate moves. I hope that you learned uh, more about chess, and I hope that this video was helpful. Uh, thank you very much for watching.